After the reading of the scripture lesson, the next voice you will hear is our host pastor, Reverend Ewart McDonald, and he will come to introduce tonight's speaker. Good night, church. The scripture lesson is from Mark 10, verses 17 to 27, thus follows. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You should not murder. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not give false witnesses, testimony. You should not defraud, or you should honor, and you should honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these things I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything and have them given to the poor. You will have your treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. At this, this time, the man's face fell. He went away, sad, because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for a rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Here ended the reading of the portion of God's word and we honor it by saying, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. It is now time for the spoken word, and we want to thank God that He's always provided for us a chosen vessel to bring us a word to bless our hearts. And to lift our spirits tonight and tonight is no different tonight we have the eastern regional superintendent the pastor of the new life open bible church there is theological preparation of the jamaica open bible institute now cetus a member of the board of open bible standard churches of jamaica is married a father an evangelist locally and internationally it is my pleasure to present to us the Reverend Marcus Williams. Put your hands together and make welcome the man of God as he comes to share with us, Reverend Williams. Thank you very much, Rev. Let us pray. Eternal God and our Father, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, the only wise God, the one who was and is to come. Man could search all over, we still couldn't find no one like you. You are holy and mighty and powerful. You are God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We worship you. And tonight, dear Lord God, we have come to seek your face. We have come to hear from you. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that in this very service, Lord, your presence will come and fill this entire room like a sweet perfume. Lord, we thank you this night for that which you're getting ready to do. We give you praise, worship, honor, and glory for you who have begun a good work. You are able to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So tonight we give you glory we give you praise we give you honor and we give you worship bless your people tonight god may you speak to me may you speak through me and may you speak for me in jesus name i pray tonight amen and amen is there anybody here with a worship tonight if you brought a praise tonight it's a good time to give it somebody give god praise tonight hallelujah let me hear your praise his holy name 
from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the name of the lord is worthy to be praised come on can we take one more minute tonight hallelujah hallelujah we worship you we praise you we honor you we give you glory and adoration somebody bless him somebody shout hallelujah in this house tonight praise his holy name hallelujah if you know that god has been good to you give him a praise in this house if you know that the lord has been blessing you and keeping you and protecting you let me hear you praise him tonight hallelujah glory 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 somebody shout unto god tonight lift your voice in this house and praise his holy name god you deserve the glory you deserve the praise and the honor we bless your name tonight somebody shout unto god this atmosphere is charged with fire this atmosphere is ready for the seed of the word somebody bless god one more time can you lift up holy hands and magnify the lord with me somebody praise his holy name from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same his name is worthy to be praised cannot take us 30 more seconds somebody help me here tonight you know that you know that you know that you know that god has been good to you shout a hallelujah lift up a praise lift up your hallelujah 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 i don't know why you're holding back that shout somebody need to shout in this building tonight let the devil hear you let cancer hear you let sickle cell hear you let every tumor hear you that jesus christ he's lord over your problems lord over your situation lord over your circumstances give the lord a shout of praise hallelujah 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 praise his holy name you may be seated in the presence of god i'm excited tonight to be here to share with you the mind of god let me give honor to our pastor tonight the reverend you want mcdonald his wife his family the ministry team here all the ministers that are here members of the board our night's moderator i greet you all tonight in jesus mighty name hallelujah glory to god when you read mark chapter number 10 from 17 to 27 you will see a dialogue between jesus christ and a rich young ruler uh, uh, glory to god if you look at it you will see that this particular scripture it tells us about this young man he had everything going on for him but but he lacked some stuff and he lacked one thing and jesus said to him go and sell all you have and give to the poor and then come follow me and you heard the scripture well tonight that he became sorrowful because he had uh, he was so rich he became sorrowful he said i can't do this somebody uh, Jesus how difficult how hard will it be for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven it is better for a camel to go through the eye of a needle and Jesus said with man it is impossible but not with God for with God all things are possible I don't know what your story is tonight I don't know what the situations are but I'm here to tell you tonight whatever you're battling whatever you're going through hallelujah to God your problem is not too big for my God I want you to know tonight that God is bigger than any situation you're facing right now. Any problem you're battling tonight, I came back to encourage somebody tonight. Glory to God in the highest. When you read Mark 10 and verse 27, we are preaching from tonight. This particular verse contains a profound statement made by Jesus that offers hope and encouragement and a powerful reminder of God's limitless power and sovereignty uh the church we are right pastor we were on a seven days fast just recently and right through the fast i've been seeking god for a word and the lord asked me a question he said do you believe in the supernatural 
Do you believe in the realm of the spirit that you preach about? And he said, if you really believe in the realm of the spirit, then you have to understand that there are certain things will never be possible in the earth realm except you allow it. You got to understand if we don't bind it, it will never be bound. And if we don't lose it, it will never manifest in the natural. Want somebody to know tonight that you're more powerful than the devil been telling you. Want somebody to know tonight that you're more powerful than what you've been sensing or feeling or what your emotions give to you. Glory to God. With man, it is impossible, but not with God. I want you to know that when God created man, the Bible said that God created man in his image and in his life likeness in the image of God he created man you got to understand therefore that man carries the DNA of God first John 4 and verse 4 said little children you have overcome them for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world then the Bible tells us that Christ in us the hope of glory the Bible said we have this treasure in earth and vessel what I'm aiming at tonight is for somebody to leave your knowing that you are more powerful than you look uh, you don't need to envy Moses you don't need to envy Moses and the children of Israel that saw the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night you know why because you have Christ living on your inside which is the hope of glory give God a praise here tonight glory to God and so the limitless God and his limitless power that God lives in man every blood washed believer every child of God God lives in you so Jesus begins by acknowledging the limitations of human ability he said with man it is impossible this emphasizes the weakness and limitations of humanity it highlights our needs for divine intervention ah jesus then contrasts human limitations with the unlimited power of god he declares but not with god for all things are possible with god hallelujah there are no limitations or impossibilities when it comes to god's power and his ability and I want somebody to leave here with this tonight because I know that there are persons here tonight you're going through some stuff and you're battling some stuff and you don't understand what's happening but if you can get this revelation tonight if you're a blood washed believer God lives in you and if you're not saved here tonight you can leave here with God living on your inside hallelujah to God tonight I put it to you that you can have full confidence in a mighty God in a world of doubt and fear you can have full confidence in almighty God by observing the following points you will agree with me that you can have full confidence in almighty God the first point I want to leave with you here tonight is this whatever God said he will do my God will do it hello somebody he cannot go back on his words the grass will wither and the flower will fade but God's words stand forever whatever God said he will do he will do glory to God Titus chapter 1 and verse number 2 the Bible tells us in hope of eternal life which the Lord which God who cannot lie promise before the world begun every time God speak a word he trapped him himself he cannot get out of his word and there are many persons tonight you're chasing after the almighty dollar but I guarantee you tonight if you put that trust in the almighty God then the dollar will come because the Bible said if you seek he first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you there are many persons that are walking backwards they're trying to get the things first they're trying to get everything together first they're trying to get their lives right first I'm here to tell you tonight that there is none of us here tonight who have the capability or the ability to get everything right without God the Bible said but God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us when we were unknown 
nobody help. Look at you tonight. Hallelujah. The Lord has blessed you. And the Lord has been keeping you. And the Lord has covered you. But look where you're coming from. Remember who you used to be. Every now and again you got to look at Eustaville. Where you're coming from. And then you'll be better able to appreciate what God has done. And what God is doing now. I'm here to tell somebody tonight. I'm not where I want to be. But I'm not where I used to be. Is there a praise in the house of God? Whatever God said he will do. My God is able to do it. See, see, we're going somewhere tonight because the Bible said now that God revealed his secrets to those who fear him. Uh, not everybody will know a lot of stuff that other people know because God reveals secrets and he reveals certain things to those with a relationship with him hallelujah to God anybody ever been there you're driving and this is your regular route but this morning God said don't drive there he said when you're coming back my daughter I know it's a longer road but I want you to take the roundabout and keep left don't go right this time you see the Bible said the steps of a good man they are all that by God come on somebody and so he leaded me beside the still water and he restored my soul I'm in the wrong church tonight but I still got to preach you got to understand that if you put God first and if you make God your number one priority whatever God said he will do in your life he will do it don't waste another night after tonight get close to God and here is mine for you the Bible says if you had sat in his council if you have waited in the council of God then you would have known the will of God for your life uh, we have no room for mistakes tonight we go get it right tonight this time I choose God this time I put you first this time I make your priority this time I'm waiting on your word this time I need the unction to function if you don't move I'm not moving what will break the distinction between us and the other nations Moses said he said it that your glory goes before us Moses came out of Egypt the only thing that should be on his mind was Canaan but Moses said I'm not going to the land of promise I'm not going to Canaan if God is not with me I don't care how it look I don't care how it sound I rather stay right here because if God not moving I am not moving somebody give God a praise here tonight hallelujah to God whatever he said he will do God will do it when my wife was pregnant we, we I was up praying and I was praying and out of my mouth came Lord thank you for my baby boy I we did not know the gender my wife said to me it's time now to do the ultrasound I said you gonna have a son we having a baby boy she said how do you know i said i was in prayer when the lord spoke to me she said we still got to do the ultrasound i said well i'm telling you you're carrying a boy inside your belly i need somebody to know her well it, listen if there was a girl there because god honor his word he would turn it around y'all ain't hearing me tonight i said god will turn things around hallelujah to god that's the god whom we serve because if he said it it's going to happen I don't care how it look while you were driving here if God said by the time you get home it shall be well then it shall be well it doesn't matter how ugly and messy you leave home tonight if God said by the time you get back home I'm gonna turn the marriage around I'm gonna turn your kids around I'm gonna do it well I'm here to announce with man it is impossible but with God all things Matthew 5 and verse number 18 the Bible said for I tell you truly until heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled lift your hands everywhere and said tonight every word of God over my life shall be fulfilled in the name of Jesus somebody say I cancel every attack of the adversary against my destiny in the name of Jesus come on church say everything that is demonic 
in origin that is attacking my life i command you to be cancelled to be nullified to become inoperative in the name of jesus christ of nazareth let your hallelujah be loud let your hallelujah let your hallelujah be loud in this place hallelujah mm. not one shot no one title it shall be fulfilled what is a jot a jot is a, the tenth letter in the hebrew alphabet and the smallest a title is even smaller than a jot when jesus used jot or title he was stating emphatically that god's word is true and trustworthy the lord spoke to me while i was cooling off in rev's office and the lord said one of the reason why people don't come to serve me one of the reason why people don't go deeper with me he said people don't trust me they don't believe i can do what i say i will do i'm here to tell somebody you're wasting your time if god said it you're not hearing me tonight it's going to manifest if god call you he will keep you if god save you he can provide for you if he pull you away from that relationship he'll give you something brand new y'all ain't hearing me tonight i said who god call he will keep god call fool but he doesn't keep them why because as long as you come to god no matter what state you're in he has the ability and the capability to turn your life around shout a hallelujah in this place tonight hallelujah hallelujah my god is trustworthy he'll do what he said he will do hallelujah glory to god doubters will doubt mockers will mock but god's word cannot change let the mockers mock let the doubt as doubt but if god said it i'm going to manifest it in the name of jesus psalm 119 verse 89 forever O oh lord thy word is settled in heaven forever O oh lord thy word is settled in heaven years ago years ago i got a word from god and i'm still standing on that word i'm living by that word that word is still blessing me today i remember and i'm not soliciting anything tonight i want you to hear me i remember when god called me into full-time ministry in 2010 walk away leaving everything walk away i had five trucks on the road carrying goods all over jamaica my wife was it manager for her company we were making money God blessed me with my own house before I was 26. God gave that to me. The Lord has blessed us. In Church of the Living God, when the Lord called me to full-time ministry, I said I didn't know what I was getting into. But I did not know how to trust the Lord because there was, I had pride. I had money from I was very young. From I was a little baby boy, I was selling birds and rabbits. And I, I know how to make money. I've always known how to make money. Church of the living God, you have to understand that the pride was there. Did not know how to beg, didn't know how to borrow, would never be vulnerable around people. And God said, if I'm going to take you higher, I got to break you down. Car, robo, shatter, heard your Holy Ghost. Is there somebody here, you have lost everything. There's somebody here, you're in your start over season. And God said, don't be afraid. Ah, shatter, labaka, sata. There's life after divorce. There is life after the abuse. Oh, Jesus. There is still life. There is still life. And there is still hope because God said, I will never leave you. I don't know who that was for. And, and I remember Church of the Living God. I was there praying. I was there praying. Because I had, I lost my, I walk away from everything the Lord called me. My wife still had her job. So I was, I was she was my crutch. Because she was still working. Then the Lord took away her job. Both of us home for two years. No one can get no job. Church of God, I was in the bathroom praying. And the Lord said, I will supply all your needs. According to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I got up out of the prayer and I came out the room. I came out and I said to my wife, the Lord just spoke to me. We are going to be all right. I walk away on that word and never doubt. A week after that, the hairdresser came to my house. 
My wife was washing her hair in the sink. I could not take her to the hairdresser. We were weighed down. Seven days after God gave me a word, I hear just I came to my house and said, are you a man of God? I said, yes, I'm a man of God. She said, I was in prayer and the Lord told me to do your wife here free for one year. I'm in the wrong church tonight. Well, I, I, I got to drive this home to somebody. You're, you're wasting your time getting stressed and, and then getting anxiety. Just get a word. I said if you can get God to give you a word in your trouble. If you can get God. Paul, Paul went to him three times and the Lord declined. But at the third time God said my grace is sufficient. That's why he was able to let them stay on him they rejected him he fought while peace at Ephesus but he had something that was shielding him he had a word from God that I will not die in this because God's grace when God speak in your situation it overrides your gynecologist I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. When God speaks a word in your life, it overrides your neurologist. When Holy Ghost speak a word over your life, in your family, it overrides the psychiatrist. Get God to speak to you. I'll shut up. I've received many prophecies about my son and many persons said to him, boy, you're going to preach like your father. You're going to be a prophet. Listen, let me tell you something. For those who don't understand the prophetic, the prophetic prophecy is speaking the mind of God by faith. And I want you to understand, every time a word is released over your life, there comes a warfare. Because the plan of the enemy is that word must never manifest never manifest the, the enemy will send your sons new friends will make it look like favor make it look like peace but don't forget that he come but to kill steal and destroy but if i be a man of god tonight deep in my spirit i sense a breakthrough happening in somebody's life tonight I look in the realm of the spirit and I see chains being broken. I am all shattered. Shackles been loose. Somebody who was tied for a long time and a great season. God say you're walking out tonight. You're coming out tonight. The devil is a liar. It's over. Why don't you praise him? Why don't you praise him? I said God said I tell you it's over. He said to Sarah, this time next year, you'll have a son. He did not address biology. He did not address anything as it relates to Sarah's health or Abram's health. And I realized, Rev, that there is a pattern, a template that God uses. When he called Jeremiah, he said, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you and I and I and I wait a minute God gave Jeremiah's parents no credit for his existence I don't know how you got here but God wanted you here I don't know how comes you're still alive when James chapter 4 tells us what is life what is your life isn't it as a vapor that is here for the moment and then it's gone if life is like a vapor and I'm still here, then there's a greater power. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody's been delivered tonight. I don't care how long you've been under that pressure. I don't care how long the devil has blinded your eyes. You're leaving your delivered tonight. The devil is a liar.
whatever my God said he will do he will do let me go let me go faster secondly I'm talking about my God tonight if God did it before can I tell you something he can do it again if my God did it before he can do it again Hebrews say he's the same yesterday today and he'll be the same forever no 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 i don't know if because i'm an evangelist or what i don't know if i read the scriptures different from other people but the truth of the matter is i believe this i said i believe this and i believe that what god did back then god can do it right now can i testify to somebody god is doing it right now church of god you have to hear me tonight i don't know i prepared rev i prepared another sermon for thursday night when the traffic stopped me and i couldn't get here and i said to myself i don't need to pray much because i have the word already and the lord said you will not preach that word that word was for thursday that word was for, for tuesday you're gonna preach what i said to preach thursday night because i'm bringing some people here tonight who need their faith to be lifted up they, 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 the vision need to be open and they need to see in a new level god say i'm, I'm giving us something different tonight can i talk to somebody here hallelujah whatever god said uh, yeah yeah if he did it before then he can do it again let me go to first samuel the the, the, the 17 chapter reading from 34 to 37 so let me just bring it together for you uh, david now his father sent him to look how the battle was going remember now goliath the philistine um, giant was already there the battle line was drawn and goliath was there saying send me one of you little boys send me somebody that i may kill that one and feed it to the bird send me somebody and of course the people of god that were intimidated when david got on the scene david said who is this uncircumcised philistine that defiled the army of the living god what what will be done for the man who killed this giant and take away the reproach from God's people and that news reads Saul and Saul sent for him when David got to the office of Saul David present his resume his resume say resume somebody David gave his resume David said I am a servant that's the first thing he said he said I'm a servant I'm here to tell somebody uh, you will never be victorious until you assume the position of humility you see the way up is down and many times before God build you up he break you down because when God opened the door for you you cannot say it was my baby daddy you cannot say it was my baby mother you cannot say it was an MP you can only say look what the Lord has done. Let me go a little bit further with this. There are many Christians washed in the blood of Jesus. You went for loans that didn't grant you. You went for help from family members that couldn't help you. When I wanted to buy my first truck, I went to my uncle and I shared the vision. I said, I want you to help me buy the truck and I'll split the profit 50-50. He said, you know what? I'm trying to get a truck for myself. I'm not into that. God blessed me and gave me the first one. And if anybody knew me, I have a little show offness about me. I just drive my truck one day, me a pass loaded and just break up and just break up and said, Look what God did. Talk to me, somebody. I prophesy tonight that somebody will point at your own house and say, Look what God did. I prophesy tonight. I don't know what God gonna bless you with, whether it be a car or a husband or a daughter or a son, but always remember to give God the glory. Just say, Look what my God did don't be afraid to exalt God look what my God did David gave his resume he said I'm a servant he said I kept my father's sheep he said while I'm on duty I could preach this better if it was a convention he said while I'm on duty a lion and a bear came and attacked my sheep and took a lamb out of the flock took a lamb out of the flock verse 35 of first samuel 17 david said i went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth god spoke to me and said tell the people we're going back for the backsliders we're going to pull them out of the mouth of the lion. Somebody help me tonight. Intercessor is a good place to praise with me. Evangelist is a good place to praise with me. Everyone that the enemy has robbed, we're going back. We go. Somebody said we're going back for it. 
I'm going back for my son. I'm going back for my daughter. Go back for your husband. Go back for your wife. Hallelujah to God Almighty. Go, go, go for your daughter. And you've got to move now. Don't let the devil kill him. Don't let the devil kill her. Don't let the devil kill it. I said you've got to move now. Go back for your joy. Go back for holiness. Go back for the anointing. Go back for your prayer life. Go back for your worship life. I don't know if it's the lion or the bear that robbed you this year. Robbed you last year. But I'm going back hallelujah to God the Bible said that David went back and he smote the lion and he rescued the lamb then something happened when David smote the lion rescued the lamb the lion turned towards him God said the reason why you're coming on the attack every time you rescue the lamb the lion will come at you every pastor every minister every intercessor i know this in the realm of the spirit that there are some of you give up one o'clock same you've been giving up 12 o'clock and 11 o'clock and you've been spending time in the presence of god and you're wondering why the reason why i pray the more the warfare is more i'm here to help you tonight god said to tell you your warfare is in proportion to that which you carry and if the anointing upon your life is great if the gift of god upon your life is great uh look at this ministry over here in greater portmore there was nothing light about this ministry there is nothing if, if it wasn't for the grace of god i don't believe reverend mac could carry this one i believe he's doing this through the grace of God. Can I preach to somebody here on the utterance tonight? Hallelujah. This weight is heavy and therefore those who serve in the ministry, you have a responsibility to hold him up. Hold him up in prayer. Hold him up. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Can't preach this stuff in open Bible because some people losing their praise already. Do you know that in other churches your people who go to America and they know what size suit their pastor wear and what size shoes he wears and the white and so forth but in open bible we are not treated like that i don't know about greater portmore but we are not treated like that because we tend to believe that something is wrong if you hold up moses hand if you put a seat for him to sit on and to just be a little bit more comfortable because you got to hold your hand up it's difficult to stand and do this but if you get me a seat to sit i'll be better able to hold this thing up i know i'm preaching to the, i cannot preach to five people here tonight glory to God in the highest the reason why the lion will attack you every time you pull a sheep from the lion's mouth the energy will be turned towards you I have just explained your warfare hallelujah take the lion by the beard and smoke the lion be positive remind yourself of past victories Greater Portmore Open Bible Church, listen to me tonight. I give you permission. Walk away from every friend we talk about not now going for them. Walk away from every friend we tell us so from a barn till now I'll no minus in a blessing. Something wrong with that. We all have past victories where God showed up for us and said, Be still and know that I am God. There are some situations you know you wasn't the one who fought that one. You've, anybody ever been there? And I want you to be real with me tonight. We're not going to shine the cameras on you. Have you ever been there where you felt like you were going to lose your mind? Yes, Put your hand up. If you've ever been there where you felt like you were going to lose your mind. Listen, church of the living God. I, I've been there before. And there was nobody I could call to. I got, got up 4 a.m and I went into that place of prayer and I said God you have to show up for me this morning I said God I need a 
miracle can I preach to somebody here tonight you got to remind yourself of past victories if you got five children if God did it for Romaine he'll do it for Joshua if God brought through Olivia he will do it for Francine can I preach to somebody here remind yourself of past victories when the devil call it new moon but God delivered when they call it bronchitis but God delivered no they calling it cancer well can I tell you the same God that tried up new moon the same God that caused the lump to be dissolved he will deal with that cancer can I speak to that cancer tonight every form of cancer breast cancer cervical cancer prostate cancer I command every cancer to bow to the anointing bow to the Lordship of Jesus Christ let me go further with this one I command sickness spirit of infirmity the Lord rebuke you if you're sick in your body put your hand up on your body you're the same yesterday today and forever you did it back then you can do it right now I claim healing I claim healing tonight you were wounded for our transgressions you were bruised for our iniquities the chastisement that brought us peace was laid upon you let fire go through your body right now lay your hand upon your body I command the fire of God Bando Shatai burn on fibroids burn on every cyst I command cysts be roasted with fire every bleeding disorder every bloody condition I command you to dry up every fountain of blood every prolonged menstrual cycle dry up tonight in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I hear the Lord said to tell you your memory is coming back your memory is coming back put your hand up on your head your memory is coming back you're going back to school you're going to go to PhD you're going to finish your masters that fear of study yes yes you're coming out your season of breakthrough has come somebody shout hallelujah lift both hands and shout hallelujah shout hallelujah I can't hear your greater poor more shout hallelujah lift up your hallelujah Can I tell you tonight? You don't need to have a clue how it's going to happen. But we know God will do it again. You don't need to know how. You don't need to know when. You just need to know that my God, He will do it again. Clap your hands for victory tonight. Mm. The third thing I want to say to you before we close tonight. God has your best interests at heart. You have to know that tonight he has your best interest at heart jeremiah chapter 29 he said if 11 he said i know the the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord and it's thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expected end this is a reminder that amidst the longevity of your suffering god has a plan for you to prosper you to give you hope for the future i i want i don't know if there are persons here who don't know the lord jesus christ as your personal lord and savior but i can tell you tonight you're missing out if you don't know jesus christ as the prince of peace you're missing out if you don't know him as adonai if you don't know him as el shaddai if you don't know him as jehovah nissi you're missing out if you don't know him as jehovah shama you're missing out if you don't know him as Jehovah Make, you're missing out. Jehovah Sabot, the Lord of hosts. If you don't know him, you're missing out. Church of God, I want you to hear me tonight. I got a direct word from God that I have to release out of my spirit. I want somebody to know tonight that Christianity is real. It is not a figment of your imagination. This is that something I do. Let me tell you, pastor, I was driving over. And as I cleared the toll, I pull over. 
And I said, I got to take another five minutes in prayer. I shut and I started praying. I started praying until tears became a, a language that God understood. And I, and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I realized the realm is so real. The realm of the spirit is so real. And there are many more persons here. You should have gone further. You should have gotten more breakthrough. But you believe somehow that it's just a figment of my imagination. And if I just say my little prayer in the morning, if I just say a little prayer when I'm going to bed at night, then that's all right. And then Sunday morning I'm here to fellowship. It's more than that. There's a place where deep call it unto deep, but the noise of thy water spout where thy waves and billows have gone over me there's a place in the realm of the spirit the bible said while you're yet speaking god is releasing your answer there's a place in the realm of the spirit where you don't have to say it you just think it and god manifests it yes there's a season that man go through that is called the season of manifestation where doors will open church of god let me tell you tonight ever since i became i get an understanding of this season i know what it feels like to go to the car mart and point my finger on the car and say you'll never be sold and I don't care how much money they come, come here with you belong to me you got to understand that there's a place in the realm of the spirit where God will not allow your word to fall to the ground are you hearing me here tonight God is bringing somebody in this house to another level God is bringing somebody to another dimension tonight your faith is growing your belief in God is growing and when when you leave out of here tonight you're going back home as champions you're not a victim anymore but you have become victors tonight you're walking out of here in power you shall have what you say let me say this before i wrap up tonight the first house god blessed me with i remember when that those houses it was only marl and i remember when there was when we needed that we needed that house and we had no money my wife and I, we had zero dollar, zero dollar. There was no money. And I remember I was there praying and the Lord said, do what you preach. Go practice what you preach. I said, all right. I had a, a bus at the time, my wife. I said, baby, come. We go into our house to have dinner. There was no house, only marred. Yeah. And I got my wife, I bought KFC. On, and I, I brought Brother Toby with me. Yeah. And we went there. I parked the vehicle in the marl. Yeah. I stepped out. I said, listen now, we're having KFC in the living room. Yes. I said, you sit over there, baby. We sit right here. We're on the center table right now. We're having KFC. Yes. And I said, this is the master bedroom yes. and the master bathroom on the marl. Say marl. Oh, my armor bearer said, Rev, I live all the way in Clarendon. So when I come from Clarendon to stay over for Bible study, I'm sleeping over here. Yes. I said, what you saying, man? He said, I'm sleeping over you 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 gotta hang out with the right people church of god i i stand here tonight and i can tell you that exact location the lord gave me a house right there the exact location god is waiting for somebody who will move by faith he has your best interest at heart you got to hear me and it doesn't matter what he take you through he has your best interest don't give up when you find yourself in a crisis or experiencing different situations just as what happened in the past how god delivered his people he can do it for you now can i say this somebody write this down you don't walk by situation you walk by revelation situation will always come and go but whatsoever god says about you it stands forever tonight god say you are blessed and highly favored tonight god said you are covered and you shall be prosperous and he said your latter shall be greater than your past tonight god said he has your best interest at heart why is it that the bible tells us in romans 8 28 that all things work together for good for those who love god and those who are called according to his purpose it doesn't matter where you are in life now god is going to work it out for your good i say the last thing then we pray 
Joseph, a man of God, his mother made him a coat of many colors. He had blue on it, which signifies royalty. White was there, signifies purity. Red was there, signified the blood of Jesus. You know all the different colors. He had a, he had a, he had a beautiful coat and he was loved by his parents. And, and somehow, in order to, to manifest God's glory, God looked at the one that was most favored. And he said, I'm going to use you to manifest my glory. Church of God, you must understand that Joseph was living in Canaan, the land of promise. How, why would God pull his servant out of Canaan and lead him on a journey to Egypt? That doesn't make no sense. But God has your best interest. And the Bible said, they threw him in a pit, but the pit had in no water. Why would that be in the scriptures? The pit had he no water. In other words, it was meant to kill him. It was meant to drown him. But that day, the pit had to be dried. See, see, see. Some of you find yourself in situations, and up until this point, you still don't understand how they made it out. What, what happened? How did I cross over? You don't have the answer. It was God. The pit sold into slavery reached potiphar's house ended up in prison but it was always a part of god's plan 200 miles from canaan to egypt from kingston to montego bay harsh condition but god had a plan church of god as i close tonight you look at joseph's journey and all the things he went through and at the end of it there is a word that was released you meant it for evil but God meant it for good that was when the Lord spoke to me and God said to me Rev I don't choose based on height I don't choose based on status I don't choose based on your influence but the Lord said, I choose based on heart. He looked in advance and he saw the heart of Joseph. That no matter what he would have gone through, he would still forgive them. He would still bless them. And he would still bring them out. And even Joseph's situation was typology. A type of Christ. Who would forgive the people, provide for them and bring them out of bondage that is the god that i'm introducing you to tonight if you don't know the lord jesus christ you're missing out let go tonight and give god a chance in your life with man with society it is impossible but not with god for with god all things are possible put that together for the lord tonight Give the Lord a praise tonight. If you are here tonight in this revival crusade and you're not a Christian, can I see your right hand? Can you raise that right hand? Let me see. If you are here tonight and you're not a Christian, let me see your right hand. I see that hand on the back. Is there anybody else here tonight? You're not a Christian. I want to pray with you and I want to pray for you real quick i'm going to invite you my sister and if there's anybody else we won't keep you long come to the altar let me pray with you and pray for you if there's a backslider here tonight i want you to come you have wandered away from god you started out well with god but something happened and you walked away we're not here to condemn you we are here to pray for you that's why god called this meeting this week that is why we have come we have come to pray for you we have come to bless you and to encourage you that god is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask for think or even imagine according to his power that work within us come on up here tonight let me pray with you clap your hands together for them one more time is there anybody that's here just before our worship team starts singing i want to say this to you tonight if you are baptized listen carefully i know you are here if you are baptized you come into church you might not even be a member of this church but a member of this church or other church but you know that I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And you want to make a fresh commitment tonight that grace is in this house tonight. 
I want you to walk to the altar. A fresh commitment. I'm done playing with God. I'm done playing church. It's over. I'm giving God everything tonight. I'm waiting for somebody else. I know you're here. You're in this building. And right now I'm speaking to you. There's a tugging happening at your heart right now. There's a pulling at your heart. And God is speaking to you. There are many of us tonight. We hide behind positions. We, we hide behind a hallelujah. We hide behind praise the Lord. We hide behind the anointing. But there's something in your life that you need to surrender to God. The altar is open tonight and I want somebody to understand the altar listen carefully they, they are, unless there is meat on the altar there will be no fire the fire comes when something is on the altar and I want to pray for that person tonight or persons tonight you're born again you're a Christian but you're struggling and you know that you're not where you're supposed to be I want to do a quick prayer with you tonight come let me pray with you and pray for you this is your surrender this is what the altar is for you can take those heavy burdens you can take the struggles and you can leave them right here I guarantee you tonight if you walk from where you are it will be the last night you carry that beset in sin if you walk from you are i hear your holy ghost that door that you open you open a small door a very small door and you've been trying to close that door five years now and it's still open you can't do it you can't do it you need god to help you and what the lord is saying tonight you got to expose the devil you're not keeping no secret with the devil expose the devil tonight by walking forward and say this is my surrender I count to five if you refuse to come i'll continue one this is my surrender i'm done with this struggle i've repented of this too much it has to leave my life tonight two three four five raise your song worship leaders we close in raise your song that's what this altar is for. You don't have to carry those burdens anymore. There's a light in the darkness. There's a love that's true. Jesus is waiting, is waiting there for you. Come quickly now before you close the door. Will you make it right tonight with God? Oh, that's what the altar is for. Only one more time, one more time, one more time. That's what the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to carry those burdens anymore. There's a light in the darkness. There's a love that's true. Jesus is waiting. He's waiting there for you. Before he the door. That's what the altar is for. That's what the altar is for. Thank you very much, praise team. If you're physically able to stand, I'm going to invite you to stand tonight. And I want you, Greater Portmore, to stretch your hands towards these people at the altar tonight. I prophesy tonight that the wind of God is getting ready to blow and there's a shift that is coming. I prophesy tonight that you will walk in this place and you will experience the tangible presence of God without anyone open a mouth. I prophesy tonight that in every service there will be angelic visitations. In every service you have the presence of God will sit upon this ministry tonight i decree and declare that covenant has been made tonight in the realm of the spirit that somebody's mind is made up to go to the next level somebody will walk through the door called faith 
and do miracles. May the evangelists arise. May the prophets prophesy. May the pastor shepherd. May the teaching anointing come. May the glory of God come upon this ministry. May the young people be taken to another level. Visions and dreams. Goals and aspirations will become a reality. I prophesy tonight that what was hard six months ago will become easy. I pray that divine help has come. And the spirit of truth will manifest himself. And the glory of God shall rest upon this ministry heavily. Oh God, the wind that you're sending, whatever is not of you, blow it away. And whatever is needed for the next level, carry it in that wind. Kando shakatalabasiku. If you're standing, lift both hands and give God a praise tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, see, that's what I preach tonight. There are still many persons who still don't understand the realm. That when you come in agreement, you make it a reality. When you come in agreement, it, it, it was spoken, it was released. How you get involved in it is by saying, yes, Lord, or we agree in Jesus' name. Yes. My time has passed. Stretch hands towards the people at the altar tonight. Hallelujah. My sister, God, going to change your life. The Lord said, I tell you, it's not where you start. It's how you finish. Yes, I look at you in the realm of the spirit to see the things you have gone through many stuff and the questions you ask why when where and how the lord said tonight is your night to know that the promises i made to you when you were 16 and 17 those promises still stand the lord said even the covenant of the bargains that you made and you wandered away from your part of the bargain god said i still remember you and i love you with an everlasting love every spirit of rejection is leaving your life tonight because god has your best interests at heart do you believe God can turn your life around? Do you believe God can change your life? Can I tell you tonight? It's starting now. This is the beginning of a new thing for you. Watch God work in your life. Father, cover them, stretch hands towards them and whisper prayer. Whisper prayer tonight. Come on, point your hand this way. Whisper prayer for somebody tonight. That God will bring transformation and revival. And God will snatch them from the enemy. I can't hear your church. In the mighty name of Jesus, we loose them tonight from the bonds of wickedness. Every plan and trick of the enemy, we cancel it tonight. From over their lives in the name of Jesus. Everything holding their blessing and their prosperity and their deliverance in the realm of the spirit, we command you to loose it now. Loose it in the name of Jesus. Loose their blessings and their miracles. And as of tonight, they will walk before God and live a life that pleases the Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Look at me tonight. Look at me at the altar Hallelujah. tonight. I want you to repeat a prayer. Anybody here been baptized before? Let me see if you've been baptized before. Okay. So we have, you, you guys have never been baptized before. We're going to believe God. My sister is your time now. You can't run no more. Everywhere you go, people pick you up. At your time now, man. You have to let go now. At your time now. Every which part you go, somebody identify you and say, God have a plan for your life. It's, it's true the matter. Here? At your time now. Close your eyes at the altar. Repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, I admit and I confess that I've sinned against you. Please forgive me. Come into my heart and make me a Christian. I repent tonight. It's over. It's done. I give you everything. I receive you tonight, Jesus, as my Savior and as my Lord. Amen. Amen. Look at me tonight. You prayed that prayer just now from your heart. Jesus entered your heart just now. And that is why we have trained and qualified counselors in this ministry who can talk to you on any problem you're facing tonight. I'm going to ask you to go with them. The counselors will take you to my right. You can go with them. They'll talk with you some more. Go to my right. Come here, my sister. Let me do a prayer for you tonight. Come stand behind her, woman of God. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. Stretch hands towards this woman of God tonight. 
Father, tonight in the name of Jesus, I thank you for her obedience. Let God be true and every man a liar. I don't know what she's battling, whether it be psychologically, mentally, emotionally, whatever the struggle might be. I pray tonight in Jesus' name, the mere fact that she walked from her seat to the altar, oh God, the enemy has been exposed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I pray tonight in the name of Jesus, every shackle and every chain that want to hold her in captivity, I command them to be broken now. Lift your hands, young woman of God. Lift your hands. I command them to be broken in Jesus' name. I command her to be set free in the name of Jesus. And as she walked back to her seat tonight, I pray God that something would have shifted in her heart. Something would have shifted in her mind. Something would have shifted in her spirit. And something shift in her body. In the name of Jesus, we consecrate her. We dedicate her and we bless her tonight we cover this gift with the blood of jesus christ and we decree and declare that this gift and this anointing will not be tainted by the devil will not be tainted by the world in jesus name Hallelujah. amen look at me my sister like mountains run about jerusalem so the lord has surrounded tonight listen to me how old are you I'm going to say something to you. You must never forget. Rev, come stand here, Rev. If you don't know, listen carefully. You must never settle. Don't be afraid to say, this is not it. Yes. If you feel it's, you're suffocating in the stove, it's not it because God has great things in store for you. Amen, amen, listen, amen. what your mother did not achieve, you, you will achieve it. What your father yes. did not achieve, amen. you will achieve it. Listen to me. I, I don't know who you are. But, but even as a young child growing up, you have had some encounters and you have been through some stuff. And God want me to tell you tonight, your past does not define you. Amen. I am here to prophesy greatness. It's on your inside. I am Andoko Shaka Karabasiku. I say greatness. You will remember tonight when I prophesy to you. Because I command the realm of the spirit to grant your favor that doors will open automatically what your mother, mother struggle in you will not struggle in it in the name of jesus let it be happen let it be happen let it be done now in jesus name somebody shout hallelujah Hallelujah! receive our pastor tonight in jesus name just be seated for a little while while the altar workers are ministering to those who came to the altar for salvation. This Sunday morning, God's willing, we are going to be having a baptism. So while you speak with them, altar workers, if uh, anyone wants to get baptized, you can raise that question and take the information. But we are going to be having a baptism during the service this Sunday morning. So if you know anyone that has gotten saved, during this crusade or outside of the crusade and wants to get baptized and this Sunday morning God's willing we are going to be having a baptism so please do remember same tomorrow night God's willing is the final night of our crusade if you didn't invite someone throughout the time please make every effort to invite somebody to the crusade I mean Persons have asked if you don't have white, well, just come along, come along, invite a friend. It is an all-night white affair, but of course, come along, be here, and it's important that we invite an unsaved. Yes, God has been good to us, with the word of the Lord has watered our hearts, I believe, and has lifted our spirits, and I believe we indeed have been revived, renewed, and restoration is come our way put your hands together and magnify the name of the lord our god who has our interest at heart he will do it again shall we stand all across this place we start 7 p.m tomorrow evening sharp we will have the miracle open bible mime group with us we will have the our dance group ministering and we'll be having ministry in song so brethren please don't 
miss it. It is not a young people thing. Somebody asked, it is a church service. Yes, so the way still woman says it's for young people. It is a church service and it is the final night of the crusade. You cannot afford to miss him. You know, we put a white thing to it because, you know, we're trying to especially appeal to our young people. But it is a church service. White, black, red, come to church. Amen. 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 Just stretch your hands towards our deaconess, Lorna Thomas Black, at this time. She's not feeling our best, so we're going to pray for her and then close. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. Thank you that you are still in the healing business. We thank you that you have our best interest at heart. And that which is impossible with man is possible with God. And you say that healing is the children's bread. And Lord, you tell us in Job 22, 28, that we must declare a thing and it shall, it shall come to pass, O oh God. And so right now, as healing is the children's bread, as we stretch a hand to your daughter, she will not go back home the same way she came. Lord God, she's being healed right now from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, O oh God. We speak a word. Let healing be established unto your daughter even now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for tonight. Remember the man of God, even as he has shared and poured out. We pray that you will pour back into him. Every family represented here this evening. We pray, oh God, even as we have received your word, we pray that we will go back out and uh, to spread your word, to share, to remind somebody that God has their best interests at heart and you are the God of the impossible. Bless your mighty and your majestic name. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen and amen. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forever. Amen and amen. Looking forward to seeing everyone tomorrow. Come out in your white suit, in your white shirt, in your white pants. Come on out. God bless you.